Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another one. I hope you are all staying safe out there. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at our 1 7 scale limitless 100 mile per hour build. In this build, we're going to specifically use the 1721 Castle motor, which has a 2400 kV. And we're going to use this 2400 kV motor with 8S. Now, I do have to warn you that this motor is a complete beast, and we've talked about this in a previous video. However, if you were to try any sort of motor with a 2400 kV and use 8S, that is going to get you into significant trouble. So there's a couple big points to recognize here. First is that the KV selection and the RPM range that you actually operate the car in is extremely important and we're recognizing that right now. The second point that is incredibly important to know and understand is that we have to go through the right calculations and not just drop this motor in utilizing the stock gearing that already exists within this transmission here, we have to go through and get the correct gearing in order to hit our target 100 mile per hour goal. If we did not go through this exercise, we could run the risk of burning things out very easily. The way that we're gonna go through the gearing calculation is we're gonna utilize the spreadsheet that has been created several weeks ago that you can find if you want to use it as well right on the RC Explained Patreon website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's go check that file out right now. First thing we need to do, head over to patreon.com slash RC explained. I'll leave a link as mentioned before, right in the description below. Find the post that has this downloadable spreadsheet for calculating the motor KV, and then we want to go and open this up. So we can go ahead, click on it. We should have full access to this once we are a member within the Patreon website. And now it gives access to a calculator that you may have seen in a previous video. On the right hand side here, we use this one in order to actually determine motor KV. This is when we are selecting the motor to make sure that this would possibly work for our limitless build. In today's case, we're gonna use the one on the left-hand side in order to actually calculate the speed we're gonna get with different combinations of gearing. So the first thing that we want to do is select all of the appropriate boxes and enter the correct value for our specific build. So no matter what build you guys are doing, you can use this spreadsheet too to go through the exact same process. And we'll talk about that, how it compares with what we are doing today, specifically for the Limitless and this monster motor versus another build, more of a generic build. So the cell count we are using, eight. We're gonna keep the load factor at 3.3 volts for a speed run. If you're not doing speed runs, you can go with loaded voltages a little higher. You might wanna select 3.4, 3.5 or so. And then for KV, we are specifically using our 2400 KV motor, it gives us our total RPM there. And our load factor, we're gonna keep that at the default value of 12% our pinion gear. And what I wanna show you first is what would happen if we went with the stock gearing on our Limitless. Stock gearing on the Limitless uses a 27 tooth pinion gear and a spur gear of 34. Our diff pinion gear is 13 and our spur on the differential is 43, giving us the final drive of 4165 there. Our diameter of the tire, yeah, it's right around that 101, that is millimeters, it's not mentioned there. And now you can see the speed that we get out of this. 254.8 kilometers an hour, 158 miles per hour. So that is an incredible amount of speed. And if your components are not up to that challenge, for example, the speed control, this is not going to happen. So just because we're able to calculate these values doesn't mean it's going to happen. Let's go now and put in a combination of gearing that makes sense for our specific build. So in our case, the stock spur gear is simply just not going to work. This car has been designed to use common motors. You know, obviously that's what manufacturers want to make sure they're setting the vehicle up. Our car is not going to use a common motor and our RPM is gonna be operating on the extreme high end in terms of what we're used to seeing in typical motors. So in this case, we will have to go with a higher spur gear count, which is not all that common when setting your vehicle up for speed runs to go up in the spur gear count. So another thing to mention in our specific build, if you highlight both these cells in the bottom right hand corner here, we see a sum of 61. The sum of 61 essentially tells you the distance 
between the center of the motor, so right on the axle, to the center of your main drive shaft or where the spur gear is mounted. That distance of 61 is going to be too small for our motor. Our motor is large and it would start to cause interference if we went with this value. We're gonna bump this up to about the 64 mark. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna slowly play around with this so we get a total of 64 for our gear. This is not something you usually would have to go through if you're selecting gearing for a more general type car. Most of the time you're gonna keep your spur gear the same and you're only gonna play around with the pinion gear. And you, the only thing you need to keep in mind is that you don't exceed your limitations. Too small on the pinion gear and you won't have enough room. Too large on the pinion gear and you won't have enough room. Let's go ahead and start to increase this. I'm gonna jump this up by six teeth, which means I'm gonna drop this down by three and I think that should give us the total of 64. So that's 64. And now we're looking at 120 miles per hour. So that's not exactly where we want to be. We want to be somewhere closer to 100 miles per hour for our specific goal. So let's go and select this to be a spur gear combination of 41, which means we drop this to a 23, keeping our total here at 64. We now have 111, not where we want to be. One step further, 22 and 42. Now we're at 104.5. So we're getting into where we want. So we'll go another step here, 21 tooth pinion gear using a 43 tooth spur gear. So this one is right around the 97 mile per hour range. So now we have a couple questions. Do we want to go with this combination or would we prefer to go with the 22 42 combination getting us 104.5 when it comes to which set should we go with the 22 slash 42 or the 21 slash 43 it really is a personal preference at this point the speed down here it's minus three we're short three miles an hour on this one and we're over by four and a half on our other combination. And keep in mind that this is all theoretical numbers. This doesn't really mean all that much to us at this point. We know that we're close with either setup. So what I probably would go with at this point is either one of the combinations, they both look like they can achieve it, and then fine tune from there. So imagine we took the 21 slash 43 option. What we would end up going with is a potential 22 tooth to jump it up by five miles an hour. And then if that didn't work, we go up to a 23, then we're at 106.7 miles an hour. So you can see it's not the actual speed this calculates to, but it's the difference of speed that we're getting. So every time we go and add a tooth, we're gaining about four approximate miles per hour. And that's what's going to help us achieve our goal if we're short. Essentially, that's the way that you can fine tune your build. And this would not be done on the calculator. You'd obviously just be switching out the pinion gear, putting a new pinion gear right into the vehicle. You would not have to come back to this calculator. So at this point, I have the option of either selecting 21 slash 43 or 22 slash 42. Both of those sets can get us right around our target goal. Now we can go ahead, get that spur gear and pinion gear on order, and we're probably gonna pick up an extra couple just so we can fine tune if necessary when we do our testing. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna have to take a look at how we're gonna rearrange all the components to make it all fit within this platform. So stay tuned for that. That's coming in the next video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.